Hello, and welcome to the Blockchain.com podcast. My name is Nicholas Carey, co-founder and vice chairman of Blockchain.com. From the intrigue surrounding Satoshi Nakamoto, general market volatility, Web3 innovation, and crypto regulation, crypto's journey to where we are today hasn't been straightforward. In our latest The Story of segment of the Blockchain.com podcast, we'll chronicle the journey by speaking with some of the most influential people in the space, the pioneers, the developers, and the investors. Today, we're joined by Joao Reginato, VP of Product at Circle, to describe how the innovation of stablecoins, a cryptocurrency designed to have a relatively stable price, uh, typically through being pegged through a commodity or currency, is uh, regulated or regulated by an algorithm, can have an impact not just on the crypto market, but the macroeconomic environment at large. And I'm thrilled to have uh, Joao with us, who's basically a stablecoin OG, uh, was uh, head of the product launch for uh, the stablecoin USDC in 2018. So we're thrilled to have you on today. We have a little, tra- a little tradition here. And the first question we always ask is, how did you earn your first buck, pound, dollar, or euro? Tell us a little bit about your journey into financial literacy and how you got into working in the crypto. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm. I think it, it, it matters to say that I'm originally from Brazil. So when you say, you know, how did you earn your first buck? My first buck was actually in, gosh, not even in Brazilian reais back in the day. I'll show my age now. It was. Uh, it was another currency. Let's not get there. But but anyway, <laughs> I grew up in currency. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was <laughs> Brazil has a lot of interesting stories. I remember my my dad going to the bank with like literally a shoebox full of cash, you know, for them to print an additional three zeros on every banknote, so that kind of stuff. So that that that's the the context, you know, when I earned my 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 first buck. And I think it was the classic, you know, lemonade stand kind of thing as a as a child. Then then I moved out of Brazil. I've been away from Brazil, you know, for 17 years. So if you want to know when I earn my my official dollar that was much later you know when i actually uh, moved over to the states a few years ago oh uh, thank you for sharing that it's so fascinating when we have guests on the podcast uh, that come from places that have seen such a uh, turmoil with their national currencies whether that's the argentinian peso or the venezuelan uh, bolivar or the real or the turkish lira or others and there's so many of these stories out there and i think it's such an important one to hear because oftentimes we sort of forget uh, and take for granted that maybe that the dollar is just the most stable coin in the world or something. So um, let's talk a bit about stable coins. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, you were on the founding team of bringing uh, the USDC product to market. So explain like I'm a five-year-old, what, what is a stable coin? Sure. Uh, a stable coin is, a, first of all, it's a digital currency, right? So it's, it's a currency in digital form. And the, the ambition for a stable coin is to peg its value to something else, right? Typically to, to some other type of, of asset that people are familiar with. Um, I think most, most relevant types of stable coins have to do with, uh, with digital currencies that aim to, to peg the value of, of you know, uh, th- their currencies to, to some fiat currency, right? So typically the dollar stable coins, the euro stable coins, those are the products that have been uh, become more popular in, in the recent uh, number of years. But there are also stable coins that attempt to peg themselves to, you know, the value of the gold or to some other form of commodity or maybe to a basket of, uh, of assets. You know, those things get a little bit more complicated. But, but the concept of pegging a currency to some other currency is actually fairly, um, fairly traditional. You know, uh, like many countries have attempted to do that for many, many years. Um, I think with the, with the advent of digital currencies, eventually people figure that in digital form, there's also this desire to say, hey, we, what if we combine all the good properties of a digital asset, of a digital currency, but from a value point of view, make sure that you peg it to something that people already value in their day-to-day lives, like the dollar, like the euro, things like that. Got it. So the history of stable coins really has a history in older currencies, and these are just new tools to do some of the same things. Um, all right, I get it. So let's talk a little bit about some of the ways people are using stable coins today. Um, can you maybe provide some examples or things you know about um, from the USDC community that would be uh, helpful for us to share with our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think increasing the increasing the complexity of the conversation a little bit. I think the interesting thing about stable coins is that they have this dual uh, nature to them, right? They they are because they are built as a digital uh, currency. They they are naturally uh, programmable because you know all digital currencies they have essentially a, an API if you can think about that. So there's a way for our developers to write code against that asset and sort of manipulate them in an automated way and and essentially build applications on top of that. So whenever I talk about the uses for USC, I always like to talk about this dual uh, behavior that that these uh, instruments have. 
So on the one hand, USDC can behave as a, as effectively an open dollar platform on the internet for developers. So one of the things that people do, as I said, is they they look at the API, as I said, that exists for USDC on chain. And by the way, it's a permissionless API, so anybody can write you know code that that interacts with USDC, and they can create new innovations on top of that. Right? Uh, people have created. Uh, synthetic versions of USCC that have an additional uh, behavior. For example, somebody could create a, a, a digital currency that's valued as the dollar like USCC, but uh, that is specific to parents to give it to their kids so that they know exactly how they're going to spend, right? So it has limitations in how it can be spent. So all of that digital behavior uh, can be can be built on top of these instruments like stablecoins, and that's an extremely powerful thing. The dual behavior of those is that these assets they behave like a like a bare asset, right? So in a way, it's it's a little bit like cash that you hold in your wallet. So there are all those applications that you know you would have typically for a dollar, and you know the list is is obviously very very long. And you can do the same for stablecoins. So a couple of things that people do with a stablecoin like USDC, obviously they're very popular in in crypto capital markets. So they are a way for you to hold dollars in digital forms and participate in, in all these crypto markets, whether it is because you, you know, you want to uh, invest in Bitcoin or maybe you want to, uh, you know, participate in a, in a DeFi uh, application or things like that. There, there are much more interesting, and I think particularly with USC kind of real world uses for, for what we are doing as well. Uh, for example, uh, you know, as we discussed before, I'm from Brazil, you know, it's a country where people uh, value having part of their assets in dollar terms. You know, uh, most people in Brazil hold a little bit of their portfolio, their assets in dollar terms, uh, you know, sometimes physical dollars, sometimes a dollar bank account. Uh, now they have the option to also hold dollars in digital form directly on their phones. And a lot of people in Brazil, Argentina, emerging markets in general are doing that. And I think one use case that we love that that demonstrates the power of, of these new instruments is uh, is the work that uh, the UN uh, HCR, the, you know, the, 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 the group um, looking after, you know, support for refugees as part of the United Nations, they they have partnered with Circle, with MoneyGram, with the Stellar blockchain to effectively deliver uh, aid for refugees in the Ukraine uh, via USCC. So imagine this can be a form, you know, where dollars in digital form can reach people anywhere in the world. And in, and in this case, in, in, in the Ukraine, you know, without having to go through any physical constraints, because anywhere where the internet goes and a mobile phone exists, you can, you can basically deliver this aid. I love that. One of the ways I, I try and describe it to people is sort of like dollars with wings. So it's yep. a cash instrument that's digital that you can use for payments over the internet, which is extremely convenient uh, for businesses out there that are trying to do international trade. Uh, the settlement is very fast. There's very low fees to make these payments um, over the internet. But then there's all these more exotic use cases that are coming out when you can program the money to do all kinds of other things. <clears throat> I'm really excited about that. I love the way you described it as an open dollar platform um, for dollars on the internet. And uh, I think the, the opportunity set for that is extraordinary when you really think that Anyone in the world with a cryptocurrency wallet can now have essentially a dollar denominated account on their phone in their pocket, wherever they are, regardless of the circumstances of their birth, is an important tool both for uh, you know, basically people having uh, the ability to perform commerce globally, but also just hold dollars um, in their pocket, um, especially in the context of other currencies and the volatilities that they experience there. And uh, thank you so much for sharing that example with the UNHCR. Um, it's hard to move money into conflict zones. It's hard to move money in the pockets of people uh, who may not have um, passports or um, other things as they're fleeing violence. And uh, this is a perfect example where a traditional financial services firm or bank account system would not be sufficient in supporting those most vulnerable. And I think the work uh, being done between UNHCR, Circle, and the other partners there is extraordinary. So i um, very, very uh, interested to hear about that. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about um, maybe the types of stable coins. So you have crypto collateralized stable coins, you have algorithmic stable coins, some of which have famously collapsed and failed. Um, and then you've got these fiat collateralized stable coins. So maybe just uh, a little bit of uh, definitions around those things and, and maybe teach us a little bit about how uh, USDC functions. Yeah, interestingly enough, this this space has been going for a, for a while. I think I think this concept of stablecoins was actually introduced uh, 
almost 10 years ago, I think I think it was in 2014 when the first uh, stablecoin emerged and, and it was called uh, Bit BitUSD, uh, created by by the folks who were who were building this this um, this ecosystem called BitShares. And and it was at the time. So interestingly enough, the the first stablecoin was was not uh, you know based on the model that USC is 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 based on, which is a fully collateralized and and sort of off chain collateral model. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, but stablecoins they they started with this idea, right? We want to create a digital dollar instrument. Uh, you know, we want to peg it to the value of the dollar. But let's do that with uh, with crypto collateral, right? And so that that's a uh, that's one of the classifications of how you could potentially build a stable coin. Imagine, imagine you can acquire some sort of collateral. It can be any sort of crypto asset. So it can be Ethereum, Bitcoin, you know, bit shares, as it was the case of the first one. You you acquire that collateral, you assess the value of that collateral, and you issue an amount of stable coin on the back of that collateral, right? And that collateral, you need to be paying attention to it because the value of the collateral, if it is in crypto form, it's going to be obviously volatile in in in, in price, uh, and you need to effectively be able to liquidate that collateral um, to be able to to support the backing of the stable coin. Or sometimes, you know, in in algorithmic ways, uh, like other other mechanisms are used to try and maintain that peg. Um, there are many stable coins that have, you know. Uh, attempted to use uh, similar mechanisms. A lot of them, as you said, have have failed. We have we have had the you know the most recent and large failure has been the the failure of of UST, the the, the stablecoin built by the Terra ecosystem. But at the same time, and obviously these things are not all the same. They're all different in how they're built. You also have a stablecoin like Dai, which has been pretty pretty successful uh, in how they have built been built and and maintained their peg. USCC, though, is a, is a very, very different model. And in fact, it is a much simpler model. So it is an idea that, you know, if you want to peg a digital asset to the dollar, the best collateral that you can have is actual the dollar, right? So it's it's a, it's kind of, a, as I said, I, I always joke about with the team that, you know, USCC is kind of the most boring model, but sometimes you have to be boring. You have to be on the simple side for, for things to, to be able to work and scale. Uh, so... The, the model for USCC is, you know, a customer brings a dollar to Circle. Uh, we observe the settlement of that of that dollar in a bank account that we control. Once that is observed, we can issue a, a unit of USCC. And then we maintain those dollars, you know, and today we maintain the reserves for USCC in basically two types of constructs that are very, very safe, right? So one is actual cash held on on, on large US banks and, and another portion is, is uh, held in, in short uh, term. U.S. Treasuries, uh, effectively, which, which are very secure as well, uh, and and every time a customer comes to us with a USCC token and they say, "I want to get back a dollar," you know, we have to be able to to give them back uh, exactly one to one the, the amount of dollars that they that they are asking for. That mechanism, if you have that mechanism and you can, you know, uh, redeem USCC in circulation at scale, effectively redeem for every USDC that people bring it back to us, that creates what, what's called in, in, in pegging mechanisms, uh, an infinite buy wall. Uh, so it, which means that, you know, Circle is willing to buy every USDC in the market when customers bring it to us uh, for, by giving them back a dollar. And as long as you can do that, that becomes this very, very strong uh, anchor, anchor mechanisms that pegs the asset to, to the value of the dollar then. So there's about $31 billion of USDC that's been issued and fully backed today. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, cool. Well, um, I think uh, I'm excited to, to have you tell us a little bit more about a special announcement today on the blockchain.com podcast. What's in store for USDC in the future of stable coins? Yes. So, uh, so we have, because we believe we, we live in a multi-chain world. So, uh, you know, there are several blockchains, uh, and, 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 and people keep creating, uh, new innovations and, and these ecosystems, you know, they all have a particular, uh, reason for, uh, for having a, you know, a better quality attribute when you compare them across each other. So there are so many, um, so many interesting things being created in layer one and layer twos when it comes to scaling or, or cost effectiveness. And, and we have been bringing USCC to all of these uh, ecosystems. USCC is present today on eight blockchains, and we still have a lot of work. Uh, you know, we will issue USCC on, 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 on multiple blockchains in the next number of months. And we, we, we believe there is a continued need for that. Because as I said, uh, there's typically a lot of new development and innovation happening in these ecosystems. And we want to make sure that all of them have access to an open DARL platform so that they can 
execute on their on their desires. Uh, but there is a problem in in bringing USCC as an asset and as a platform to all these multiple blockchains, which is all of a sudden you you have the need to start moving these dollar assets across these blockchains. And and blockchains, you know, they are mostly interoperable, but you need to do some 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 work to make sure that that is uh, as seamless as possible. And in the last number of years this category of what people call bridge solutions has emerged in crypto, which are essentially solutions that allow you to move digital assets from blockchain A to blockchain B. USCC is an asset that can be moved as differently than any other crypto asset because it can, because it has off-chain collateral, because we have the dollars, you know, uh, off, uh, off blockchains, we can actually do what we call uh, teleportation of USCC. So we can literally destroy USCC on a source blockchain for a user and uh, and recreate it at the destination blockchain. And that that is the most secure, the most efficient uh, mechanism for moving USCC around. It's also a mechanism that only Circle as the issuer of USCC can, can implement. So what we are doing is we are launching a product. It's called a Cross-Chain Transfer Protocol or CCTP for short. And this is essentially a protocol that developers will be able to use to, as I said, almost physically move USC from blockchain A to blockchain B. This will effectively, uh, you know, allow USC to, to play this role that I said as an open data, data uh, platform on the internet, because effectively now developers can build their applications, uh, build them in a way that they support multiple blockchains, uh, build them in a way that, that, you know, their flows, their use cases, can can benefit users, you know, independent of the blockchain that they are in, and they can seamlessly, uh, you know, utilize USC, utilize these digital dollars across all these blockchains in a very secure way, in a very efficient way. Um, and that product we are uh, we are bringing to market very soon. It will start by connecting uh, USC between the Ethereum and the Avalanche blockchains, but we will go then on a on a on a phase rollout in terms of bringing it and connecting it to multiple other blockchains. Well, amazing. Well, congratulations. So the cross-chain transfer protocol will be launching on both Ethereum and Avalanche in sort of three steps, basically. So you initiate a transfer on the, the uh, source chain, you fetch a signal attestation from uh, Circle itself, and then complete the transfer on the destination chain, basically allowing for the teleportation of USDC from one chain to another seamlessly and nearly instantly. That is a cool product and cool protocol. So anyone that wants to learn more, please visit circle.com and stay tuned for more announcements and more chains, it sounds like, in the future. Absolutely. We will continue. We, we want to bring digital dollars for, for all developers in all these ecosystems. And we believe developers are building you know, extremely interesting innovations for end users on, on all these blockchains. Uh, from a vision point of view, I think uh, I think we need to get to a point where the the use of crypto as a technology for end users it's as transparent as other financial services are today right if you and i use you know a bank account in the us we are not really getting into the nitty-gritty of whether you know jp morgan chase is using an oracle database or or vice versa um it all works seamlessly and you know we are we are protected from the the details of the technology Products like CCTP and us bringing USC to multiple chains, I think, will aid developers in building these experiences that are effectively more seamless and, and higher level for end users. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for teaching us more about all the hard work happening over at Circle. And uh, we look forward to having you guys come back on the podcast um, at a future date with all the new developments you're working on. Thank you so much for your time today.